So you don't remember actually being in the hospital, but you remember this story. What did you hear later about your family during this time? My family struggled. Um, they saw horrible things. They saw me dead. Mm -hmm. They saw, I mean, people who haven't seen someone work a cardiac arrest, it's very violent. Mm -hmm. It's not a nice medical right. quiet procedure. It's violent. I had holes drilled in my legs. I was being uh, shocked. I was jolting. It was, it, it's not a pretty thing to see at all. And they saw, luckily they got my kids away after it had initially started. My husband saw all of it. And my husband is still suffering to this day from it. Um, I have to be honest. I mean, I think what I, in fact, I know what I saw has helped them in that part, in mm -hmm. that aspect. But as far as the long term, you know, it, it's a lot to get over that. I'm not going to yeah. say this has been a beautiful, wonderful, that part of it was beautiful and wonderful, and I wouldn't trade that for the world. The rest of it, mm. I could have done without any day. Right. It was awful, you know. But my, um, you know, they, they struggle. My daughter, they've gone through counseling. My husband still isn't counseling for it, um, for PTSD. Because, and like I said, he's in the fire department. So he sees repeated things. In fact, just yesterday or the day before, he texted me, said, I'm going on cardiac rest call. And he hates cardiac rest calls, hates them. And, but they got this lady back. So it made me happy and him happy. So I always love to hear of the success stories. Mm -hmm. But they're not, I mean, to give you an example, when after my first cardiac arrest, my dad and Billy were standing in the ER room and they told my family that I had a 1% chance of survival after this with no neurological deficits. That means no brain type mm -hmm. deficits. And um, so 1% chance is what they gave me because I'd been out for so long. Mm -hmm. yeah, and long I came time. back with nothing. And then the second time, I think there was like probably 1% chance again and I came back with nothing. So. I don't know. I, I obviously have some more work to do here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, obviously not finished. Mm -hmm. You've got a story to tell. Yes, yes. And, and that's what I'd like to share is just so people, you know, I, I always wanted to help people that are dying or going through tough times that, mm -hmm. or when we lose ones, of course, we are sad. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it hurts. I know I lost my mother not too long ago and it hurts. Mm -hmm. it's, it's awful. You miss that. Yeah. I always say I wish whenever I die, I want to talk to God and say, why can't we just have cell phone service? Like once right. a year, make a phone call. That would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sound like a good book to write. Yes. <laughs> now, what about your kids while you were in the hospital? Yeah. You told me a story about Paige. Yes. Paige is my youngest, like I said, and back then, gosh, this was eight years ago. She was probably nine, eight or nine years old at this time when this happened. And she was not doing well from what my family said. She wasn't talking. She was staying with a lot of neighbors and my sister and other people, and they all have kids her age. She wasn't really playing. And my daughter Paige is a very playful, fun girl, and she really wasn't enjoying this at all. She was very down. And... um. One morning she woke up and she just started playing, happy, laughing, and they're like, what in the world? And I was still in ICU at this time. I was still in the hospital. It wasn't like I was out yet. Mm -hmm. And you have to see, I don't remember who asked her. I don't remember if it was my father or my sister. Somebody asked her, you know, Paige, is everything okay? Mm -hmm. And she said, it's fine. And she said, they said, are you upset about your mom? And she said, no, Meemaw talked to me last night. Well, Meemaw is my grandma who was in heaven that I saw. And she said, Meemaw told me that mom's going to be fine. I don't need to worry, and I can have fun. And she was just happy, playing, and fine after that. I didn't know this story until probably a year or two after this happened. Because really? it's so hard to get everything together. I, mm -hmm. I have no, Or if they told me, I don't remember it. Mm -hmm. I had really bad memory at first, which, you know, so it is possible they told me. Yeah. But, um, yeah, and she, she knew it was okay because yeah. Meemaw told her and sometimes I think I don't know I always wonder are we as adults sometimes I think we have these dreams or these things and we're like oh, it's a dream and we mm -hmm. ignore it because that can't be that can't really happen right where kids kind of listen a little better yeah. you know mm -hmm. and then another kind of funny thing was I my mother her parents I called them mom and poppy they were my other grandparents they had passed away when I was quite a bit my well my grandfather when I was very young but my grandmother passed away when I was probably 20-ish. Um, they were there and they were in the background because my mom said, did you see mom and poppy? And I said, I did. And I, she said, you talked to them? I said, I didn't get to talk to them. But they were like, it was weird because they were kind of one person. Like they were, mm -hmm. they had their arms around each other. They were like one person almost. Mm -hmm. 
And they said it was weird because nobody else was like that. Even though there were other people who knew were married, there was mm -hmm. nobody else like that. And she started crying and I was like, what? And she said that my grandparents had always shown a lot of public affection, even when she was young. They always had their arms around each other or kissed each other, mm -hmm. held hands. And when she was younger, she hated it. It was mm -hmm. embarrassing. How about that? And I didn't know that because my grandfather died when I was probably seven or eight. I was young when mm -hmm. my grandfather died. I did not know this. But it was funny that I saw them that way. Mm -hmm. It's just, there are things that just, it doesn't make sense any other way. We couldn't have written that script on our own. Exactly, exactly. And right. that's what I said. I mean, I, I've always been a Christian, but I can't quote Bible scripts. Mm -hmm. I'm not... I'm not a preacher. I don't know all of the Bible stories and that kind of yeah. stuff, but I know what's real and I know what I believe and I know what I saw. And I yeah. think that sometimes, you know, yeah, it was real. Right. Now tell me a little bit more about being reminded of your kids, <laughs> but what was, your yeah, relationship with I your kids are going into this. that. So as most moms are, my uh -huh. kids are my life. Uh -huh. Okay. I would lay down my life for my kids. I believe you. Any day. <laughs> And as a lot of moms would. And that is what my life is. That's the reason that I'm here sometimes is my kids. I, I mean, I love my husband. I love my other family. But your kids, it's a mom. There's that bond, you know. And it hurt me afterwards to remember that I didn't think of my kids. Mm -hmm. I, it really did. It bothered me. And then I started thinking. I was like, why, don't, why didn't I think of, why was I so selfish? Like, why was I just thinking of me where I want to be, not what my kids need? Mm -hmm. And I guess that tells you the power of where you are. And mm -hmm. maybe that's why there's no sorrow or anything in heaven. I know they say there's no sorrow. I didn't feel any sorrow. I felt no pain, no missing anybody. Mm -hmm. Like I said, perfection. Everything was perfect. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's it. Maybe we can be reminded if it's meant to be, but otherwise we don't miss them until they're there with us again. I don't know. Because I didn't miss anybody. Mm -hmm. You until, weren't worried about them. No, I wasn't worried about anybody until they told me I had to go back and they reminded me and I was like, oh yeah, that's right. And, and it's funny they would say that because nobody would ever have to remind me who my kids are, right. ever. I mean, even in the hospital, I know who my kids are, mm -hmm. you know, but I didn't have, and so that kind of tells you the power, I mm -hmm. guess, of being there, yeah. that I didn't miss anybody. Right. And I didn't think about them or feel like I needed to be there to take care of anybody. Yeah.